lights in white satin Never reaching the end Hi, I'm Jeff. And I'm Jeff. And welcome to WineGeek TV, a weekly web show dedicated to helping the average Joe and Jane like me learn and appreciate wine just a bit each and every episode. We have an expert sommelier like Mr. Kichak. What's our motto? Hey! If you learned one geeky wine tip per episode, Jeff, we've done our job. Today's episode is all about what's the difference? What's all this talk about the white wines these days? Now, what's, what's, this is a, a lot of times people ask me and I hear people talk about, hey, a white wine. I just want a white wine for this. I just want a white wine for that. Well, there's a big difference between certain white wines. You know, you'll go into Applebee's or something and say, just give me a white wine. Well, what are they giving you? really just pouring you something. There is people that only drink white wine once a week or once every couple weeks don't really understand the intricacies of each particular grape. Keep in mind these are each one of these are very distinct separate grapes with distinct separate personalities. A lot like you and I Jeff. We would taste different in a glass. All right, so here we go. These yes. are the three primary ones. These are three California, very right? popular. Well, this isn't all from California, actually. Well, none of them are. But all right, right. These are, um, <laughs> these are <laughs> kind of what they call the noble varieties. Three of the more, more popular, famous, everyday uh, glasses are types of uh, Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, and a Riesling. Okay. We've all heard of them. We've all enjoyed them. But really, when you taste them side by side is, is when you really start to figure out exactly what makes each particular grape so different. So we're going to start off here with the, uh, the Nobilo Regional uh, Sauvignon Blanc from what? what New Zealand. New Zealand. Marlboro, New Zealand. 2008. All right, so here we go. Okay, so what do we get on a so Sauvignon Blanc? So this is Blanc? Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand specifically. I want us to... Definitely pay attention to the differences between each two. I mean, that's, that's really what this is about. Just okay. pay attention to how different they are from one another. Okay. Yes, they're going to be white and wet and drinkable and have a little alcohol to them, but they're going to be very different in the mouth. This is good. We're going to get a little bit more. We should get a little bit more of a tropical note, uh, kind of a grapefruit yep. thing going on in there. Already got it. Uh, maybe a little lime zest, perhaps. What? Do you need a nap? You no, I'm like fine. exhausted already. No, I'm good. Okay. I'm just trying to be lively like you want me to be, Jeff. Are you okay? <laughs> what happened? Yeah, so you definitely get a little bit of that. You get a little bit of that uh, gooseberry note to it that's very popular, very common in uh, Sauvignon Blancs as well. Mm -hmm. All right, let's drink it. Okay. The love of Mike. Right away you get a ton of acid there too. Big acid blast. This is definitely, between these two, these are going to be the two acid monsters. It really gets your mouth watering. Kind of a tartness to it. Yeah. Right? So there you go. Moving on to the Chardonnay. Now, this is an actually a Chardonnay from the Van de Pays Dock, which means the Languedoc region of southern France. Well, we got it failed, Yeah, it did. It's like it's a big cool. knot. All right. So this is. So far, so good. I've never had this wine before. Domaine Bigood. Domaine Bigood Chardonnay 2005 from southern France. All right? I have no idea how much this stuff is. I was given it as a gift. I've never tried it. Let's enjoy it together. This should, now a Chardonnay should be a little fuller bodied. Okay. A little fuller bodied, a little richer. Have a little bit more of a pineapple note to it. Okay, so okay. let's give it a shot. Acidity will not be nearly as pronounced as say the Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> as nearly as the Sauvignon Blanc, okay? Okay. Warmer groin region as well. Ooh. There's an interesting nose there. Okay, that smells like a Chardonnay. Probably no oak on it. Definitely malolactic fermentation. Look at that color though. This is definitely, it's an 05. So for an inexpensive 05 Chardonnay, you're starting to get into some, uh, some richer, uh, more of an oxidized note, which you definitely do get a little bit on the nose, but I'm not gonna worry about it. So these are also good examples of just good by the glass pours at a, at a restaurant. You're gonna see a Novolo or Nobilo, however we wanna pronounce it. Um, Saw me a black up by the glass pour at a restaurant. You're gonna find a cheap southern France Chardonnay by the glass pour on, on a restaurant. By the glass pour. You know, I got the little bit of the pineapple. Yeah, I didn't different. like it though. That really well, you know what I think that killed me is the acidity on this thing. The, the, when I tasted this, it was kind of like a washed out pineapple juice. Sure, I can see that. It's kind of, it's kind of a, a almost a uh, yeah, pineapple juice. I mean, maybe or, I'm gonna or, give it uh, one more shot, but 
okay, whatever. Well, I mean, it just, it didn't, I wasn't, it's not nearly as quality of wine either. But anyway, this is something you would literally get at a restaurant if you just asked for a white wine. It'd give you this for five bucks in a glass, all right? And make about 100% profit on it. <laughs> Moving on, okay. What is this? Oh, another OFA, the Grands Fossi and Victoria G. Um, Riesling from the Mosul region of Germany, 2005. Okay, all right. This is we're, we're fans of Rieslings from Germany, aren't we? Yes, we are. As a group, as a connected at the hip duo, we are fans. Well, Helfrick was a big. I like Helfrick stuff, right? But that's from Alsace. Oh, that's from the Alsace region. That's we right. are fans of Alsatian. We're Alsatians. We are fans of the Alsatian whites. Okay. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Getting weirder by the minute. Ooh. So here we're gonna get a little bit more medium body, and again, it's gonna be it's gonna be more in the body range of say the Sauvignon Blanc, not quite as rich. Um, big acidity, sweetness, nice balance, mm. kind of a peachiness to it. Got it? Mm-hmm. Mm. So there's three very distinct flavor profiles for three very distinct grapes. Oh, that's delish. Why aren't all whites this awesome? Yeah. I don't know, because Riesling is one of the great grapes ever. Riesling is one of... Wine Geek's favorite grapes is Riesling. Not mine in particular, but... Uh, they're very food friendly. That sweetness, that balance, that acidity, that peachiness, that very crisp feeling, but it's not being you know, jaw bracing. Mm -hmm. It's just wonderful. Especially when you get a little maturity to them. This is an 05. This is coming around just gorgeously. I've never been a big fan so, of it. So, it's the Grand Spass oh, well, in general, but this is pretty. I, I like this one. Um, we've had some Chardonnays on the show that mm -hmm. I liked. This one I'm not that fond of. Um, but I definitely tell the difference. I mean, this was much drier. Let's say you went to, hold on, go ahead. Let's pretend you went to, uh, what's the seafood place? Red Lobster. Okay. And you said, give me an unoaked Chardonnay. And this is what they brought you with dinner. And you were just sitting there drinking it, eating, talking. Would you even think that much about it? No. Yeah, you would just kind of eat it with your thing. That's what this, that's what this is. This is what this is kind of about. It's just thinking about what you're drinking a little bit more, you know. Exactly what the flavor profile you prefer so, in a wine. Well, I mean, you prefer probably this a little bit more, or this a little bit more. You might steer away from an inexpensive chintzy Chardonnay. Okay. from southern France if you saw it on a menu. So, is, is there general foods that should go with each of these types? Yes, something? and we'll get to it on the uh, notes at the bottom of the page. Okay. We're running out of time, Jeff. Sorry. Well, special thanks to Wine Thief for letting us shoot at their store, Wine Thief, at www.winethief.net in sunny Mac Groveland, St. Paul. And thanks to us. That's right. For the wine. Yes, thanks to us. These came right from our cellars. Yes, they did. All right, so Thank until you. next week. What? Tell yeah, us. have a wonderful, have a wonderful uh, Lent, and we'll see you later. Love you, bye. This, this one, this one's crap. <laughs> I don't like that one. I mean, it's crap. Jeez. Well, somebody made that. Somebody went to a lot of work to make that, Jeff. <laughs> yes. There's the uh, napkin. All right. Next.